and welcome to another episode of Fougere Family Adventures. Today I've decided to jig for Kokanee. I am anchored and I'm marking a lot of fish coming through. This is a new method to me. I tried this last week on Stump Lake and it worked pretty well. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. So I'm basically playing a video game. I have my fish finder and I'm jigging. It's just like ice fishing. I can see those fish and I can see their behaviors and how they react to my jig. Now right now I'm not marking any fish, but it's only a matter of time before they swim around and come back to this location. I'm going to bounce it off the bottom. We've seen videos where kokanee actually feed off the bottom when they're feeding on bugs. They'll actually hit the bottom, they'll stir it up, and they'll feed off of the bottom. Just going to be bouncing it off the bottom for a bit. And then I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to jig it in the open water, suspended. When you hook a kokanee while jigging, you'll get them in the top of the mouth if you're using one hook. Or if you're using a treble hook, you'll get them pinned pretty good. So when you're fishing this way, everyone just needs to drop it to the bottom, teach them to learn how to feel for the bottom, and then reel up one or two turns. Now I'm using Big Nasty Tackle Rattle Jigs. I picked this Orange Glow Rattle Jig, 5 8 ounce up from Lone Butte Sporting Goods. And I'm really excited to try this one. I love using orange for kokanee. I like to have a couple different sizes of jigs with me. You can see here that I have a couple different sizes of kokanee slammers, a couple different colors. I have a couple buzz bombs over here. And I also have a bunch of different sizes and colors of big nasty tackle rattle jigs or trout and pout spoons. So I've marked a couple spots and it's got a consistent amount of kokanee hanging out. So I'm gonna drift a little bit. The wind's not too bad. Drifting with the wind helps me cover ground. They might not like this style of jig. So if I'm not getting a hit, I'm gonna change my jig. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Put on a different jig, a little bit of gel scent. First kokanee on the jig. That's a nice size too. There you go. That's my first kokanee on 10 mile this spring. Using a kokanee slammer. He got it right in the snout and the top. That's beautiful. You got kokanee right on the bottom. 32 feet of water. I'm getting pushed now. When your line starts sliding out behind the boat, you want to make sure you're letting some out and touching the bottom. I do prefer to go the other way. That's quite a bit out there. So I might do a reset. So I'm going to cast out towards where my boat is drifting to. I'm marking three pretty good sized marks down there. I'm going to go right to the bottom, right past them, because we're not fishing very deep. We're 32 feet here. And then I will come back up to them. And if they're, yep, he's going down. If they're feeding, we should get a bite right away. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing right now. This is my kokanee slammer and I'm using this Gibbs Delta kokanee special sticky gel. It's got some UV in it. This came in my Gibbs subscription box so it's pretty exciting that I can use something and catch some fish here in the lake. And all I'm doing is I'm just putting a touch on this side and a touch on this side of the bottom end of my jig where that hook is. And that's what had that kokanee bite. So if you can see that, that's all, that's all I'm using using that and it's working really well. I've got two bites so far and stay tuned. If you're not getting bit, reel up. Entice that strike, you want it to move. Okay, nothing, so there's a couple on the bottom. I'm gonna drop back down. Just have to figure out what they want. That one fish bit on the Gibbs sticky gel. These guys aren't biting, so I might grab, I've got a little bit of power bait here, crappy nibbles. Oh. Just had a tap there. Speaking too soon. Right back down to the bottom. Make sure you're on the bottom. Hit that bottom, reel up a turn or two. There he is. There's another one. Ha, 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 ha. 
I love it. That is so cool. That's another. That's another kokanee, another the kokanee slammer. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Once you find the fish, just keep going back to them. Got a couple aggressive fish in here. I've had a couple hits, a couple misses, and play with them. Drop it all the way to the bottom, reel it up, reel it up a turn, play with these fish. And I like to have my drag tight. I actually like to use a stiffer rod. I'm using my trout rod, my lake trout rod, coho rod. Any rod will do that's fairly stiff. It can be a little challenging in the wind without a bow mount motor. I'm going to get a longer anchor rope. And I think anchoring in the wind will be good. It'll be a good workout, bringing the anchor up and down. And we're back in the fish again here. I'm going to constantly play with these guys here. I am drifting now. So my, oh, my line is out behind the boat there. And that's okay. The wind is making it difficult to stay on top of this school. It's just a matter of firing up your motor, circling them back around. Find those active fish. If one of them's not going to bite, don't spend too much time. Reel up, play with the other fish in the water column, and you might get a bite. I just had a, a tap there. Force them to chase it down. There you go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's a nice fish. <laughs> Another nice little fish caught on the kokanee slammer. I'll take that any day. So that is what I'm using. That is a kokanee slammer. It's got some Gibbs Delta kokanee special gel on it. And I'm using a power bait crappy nibble. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. And that seems to be the focal point. Staying on a little longer than my corn that I had in the freezer that I tried. I will never do that again. So here's that power bait that I'm using. It's just a tiny little piece of power bait shaped into a little pellet, really. And it is crappy niblets. Glows the color you see. Crappy niblets. Working pretty good. Catching fish on them. Okay, the wind has changed direction. So it pushes me off of that school in a different way, so I have to learn a different drift. And we found them again. Kokanee are really curious. They love to chase. So even vertically, you'll even see it when you're ice fishing. You can drop it down, you can raise it up. Kokanee will chase your setup, your bait, your jig. So constantly play with that. Drop it down, reel it up, drop it down, reel it up a couple turns. And usually when you get a good school of kokanee, you can usually force them to compete with each other. And you can usually get a bite. My line is starting to go under the boat. When your line goes under the boat, you have a harder time setting the hook for whatever reason. I like to have my line straight up and down or drifting away where my line's pointing out. For whatever reason, I get a better hook set. I'm gonna change the scent in the water. I'm not getting bit. Sometimes those kokanee will get used to the scent in the water. So I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna to go to an ear tint. I'm gonna try an anise. I'm gonna see if that helps, helps the bite. Now I've already got three fish in the cooler, but the bite is slowed down. I'm still marking fish. So I want to try and change something so that I get these fish to bite. Oh, I had a bite right away. And again, my line is below the boat. For whatever reason, that rod, you just don't get enough power on it to just take a little bit of the hook into the top end of that mouth. Maybe they are needing a more aggressive jigging style to get them interested in biting. So I've gone upwind. The wind, it's getting a little windier now. Making it more difficult to jig. But I did mark quite a few fish over a good span here. So I'm going to try a little bit more. I only need two more fish to hit my limit and then I'm done. Now I may have to spin my boat. What I'll do is because it's so windy. Be 
because it's so windy, I'm actually going to fish the other way. So I'm going to cast behind myself and then I'm going to catch up to my jig. There's the school there. That was perfect timing. So we're going to drop right down to the bottom. And once I hit the bottom, I'm going to allow my line to swing out. And that'll kind of jig it at an angle and hopefully I can get a bite that way. This type of jigging is a little bit more difficult, but because there's fish all over the water column, I could potentially hook into one. And I'll just let more line out till I hit the bottom again. And I don't even need to reel it in because as I drift, it's gonna lift my line up off the bottom. I can still do one turn, I can wait, but my line is now coming way up into the water column. I'm going to reset because I am seeing a lot of fish close. I may need to go to a heavier jig. This wind is really pushing. I have a heavier jig. I might be able to stay down with those fish. I'm marking a lot of fish. I'm just not getting... Oh! oh. <laughs> Speaking too soon. Just not getting hit as much. There he is. Oh. Holy... It's a nice kokanee. He's gonna run right into the boat. <laughs> I was too busy taking pictures. That was a nice school of fish on a big nasty taco rattle jig. There you have it. Big nasty taco rattle jig for the win. This guy's pinned, he ain't coming off. Beautiful. That is an absolutely amazing kokanee on this Trout and Pout Spoon by Big Nasty Tackle. I love it. I think jigging for kokanee has quickly become one of my favorite ways to fish for kokanee. And you get to feel the fish bite. That's probably my favorite part about it. You get to feel them actually smack it. Nice thing about these Big Nasty Tackle rattle jigs, every time you bring them up, they get charged by the sun and they glow like crazy. Oh, missed them. <laughs> that is a lot of fun. Just feeling that, that tap, just tap. Just one more. That's all I need, just one more. There he is. Hopefully I can land him. Ooh, he's fighting good, he's coming right up. Jumping behind the boat, right in the boat. Oh. I lost him. <laughs> he got tangled in the motor. Big nasty taco rattle jig. It's awesome. Darn. That was the one I needed. Let's see if we can catch another one. Make sure you're on the bottom. And of course I'm behind myself again now been losing fish that way. I've lost two that way. They've gone back behind the boat. There he is. <laughs> it's a nice kokanee. He is not ready. Oh, oh, that could have been my limit. <laughs> okay, and back to the small jigs. I like those little kokanee slammers, the small ones. That guy fought pretty hard. It's pretty cool to watch him in the water. And I'm not marking any out, there we go. The wind has died down a little, so I've went back to a smaller jig. It helped, but couldn't land them. When I catch my limit of kokanee, I stop fishing kokanee for the day. I can chase other species like rainbows, lake trout. You can even chase burbot at night if you want in open water. I like to only catch my limit because kokanee are susceptible to catch and release. 
They have a higher mortality rate when you handle them. So it's best just to stop fishing them. We want these fish to last. We want everyone to be able to catch one. There he is. Oh, just need one more. Time is running out. Come on, come on. That's my five, finally. <laughs> that took a while. Number five. It's kokanee number five on the jig. Beautiful fish. I love this size. This is a perfect kokanee. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. Beautiful.